She blames me for getting her involved. Um, so um, thank you, I think, for the opportunity to do this. Um, unlike Janet, uh, I have had the opportunity to speak to a lot of Mazungas. Um, but I don't recall being quite as uptight about it uh, as I am right now, as a matter of fact. It's a very different kind of, uh, of discussion. So um, I will relieve you. I'm not going to talk about me. Uh, I'm going to talk about um, our family more broadly. <clears throat> and I hope I don't cry. So let me, the theme of this is that, you know, those of us in particular who are medical or in the health professions, when we go to Kenya, we just dive in and we get involved in the wards and all this other stuff. And, you know, it's very easy for us to just hit the ground running. I mean, we don't know what we're doing most of the time, at least in the early going, but it's, it's really easy. But many of us take family members. And so I want to talk to you about some of the benefits that are unanticipated that come from some of those experiences. And I have four little vignettes, unless Bob tells me my time's up, but I usually ignore him, so I will continue to do so. <laughs> Um, but um, the first time, and actually I'm going to describe stuff that came from pre-AMPATH, because AMPATH really started when we really got into the HIV business. Uh, and I'm going to tell you stuff that's derivative from our first visits that were first in 85, second in 87, and third in, in 89. And um, those times... Uh, Stephanie and I, and remember Stephanie, we're going to circle back to that in a, minute, in a little bit, who's my wife and our daughter, Amy, uh, all went together to Kenya during those trips. And sometimes with a few relatives that we were dragging along. Um, and the first time we went in 85, our daughter was 14. And we went during the summer, of course, because that's the only time she could go. And she was really pissed. So... For those of you who don't know, I did a lot of work with diuretics, so that's a technical term that I just used. Um, but um, so if, if, she, if we'd been at home, she would have been taking driver's education like all of her classmates. But instead, we're dragging her across the world. And in those days, you drove from Nairobi up to Eldoret on terrible roads. It took hours. And you had a pit stop in the Kuru uh, at a, a good restroom, which was pretty pitiful. And um, she went from being mad at us for depriving her of her summer at home to wondering if she was ever going to get home alive. <laughs> and in those days, um, Sarah Ellen had developed a relationship with Testimony School. And many of you may know that. For those of you who don't, it's a, it's a big school there that's kind of right up the hill from the current IU house. And actually, in those days, the IU house was a single house, and uh, it was just across the street, basically, from Testimony School. So that's where we were staying. But Sarah Ellen had developed this relationship, and so a lot of the uh, accompanying family members would go over there and volunteer in the school. And it was a big school, and they'd just go and just do whatever was needed, and, and it was also connected to a thing called Jacaranda Cottage, which was across the street, which was an orphanage that they sponsored. And it was run by uh, two people named Joshua and Miriam. So also remember those names, okay? Joshua and Miriam. So um, we got there and I go to the wards and uh, Stephanie and Amy go up to the school to volunteer and they put their arms around them and get them involved. And, um, and this was a real turning point for our daughter. She got, you know, really immersed in this, got real excited about it. She found that she had the opportunity to boss her mother around. <clears throat> and she was actually uh, developing these, you know, these programs, and Stephanie was working for her in that. Uh, and, the, <clears throat> and what happened, one result of that was uh, we went again in 87, <clears throat> and then we weren't sure when we were going to go again. And our daughter came to us, I guess, in late 80, 88, 
or early 89 and said, you know, uh, when are we going to go to Kenya again? Because I'm going to be going off to college soon, and I know after that it'll be hard to, to visit there. We said, well, we don't really have any, any plans, any firm plans. And she said, well, you know, <coughs> if this was the best of all possible worlds, I would uh, take about a, we'd go and I'd take about a dozen of my friends so they could get their priorities straight. And we said, we're going, and we went in 89, okay? Next little vignette is uh, we took my mother when she was 78. My dad had died about a year before, and she was really hesitant about going, and we convinced her to go. And <coughs> the, the notion was that she'd be able to see this, uh, not only through her own eyes, but through his eyes. And uh, she just loved it. She got all involved, and I won't tell you all the details, but we got back, and she said, you know, <coughs> this changed my life. And I'm kind of a smart ass. So I said, well, Mom, if I'd known that was going to happen, I would have taken you 40 years ago. <clears throat> now, I thought this was hilarious. Her, her not so much. Um, so now, roll forward, and our daughter, who's now, she's now 38. So in her early 30s, I don't remember the uh, exact uh, timing. She finally has a chance to go back with us. We've been several times before uh, in, that, in that interim. And as so often occurs in Kenya, when you're going to show up there, the word gets out, and there's this whole flood of people who, come, who show up. So we're there, and uh, a lot of these kids that Amy and Stephanie interacted with wanted to see Amy. Uh, and these were kids who had had learning disabilities, because our daughter had a learning disability. And she recognized that a lot of the kids in these classrooms that she was volunteering in also had learning disabilities. And they were branded as stupid and, you know, it was terrible. So their self-esteem was in the toilet. And so <coughs> the coursework that our daughter developed that Stephanie helped with was actually to take them out of those classrooms and have, put, have a bunch of individual tutoring and really help them in terms of their learning and their self-esteem. So now roll forward to now, instead of being 14 or 16 years old, she's in her 30s and she's there. And one of these kids comes up to her, who had been one of the orphans at Jacaranda Cottage. He'd had a horrible, uh, tragic early life, had a learning disability. But now he was an adult, young adult, he was employed, he had a good job, he had a, a, a wife and a family. And he went to Amy. <coughs> Pardon me. And he said, if it weren't for you, I would not know how to read. And I would have never accomplished anything. And Lord knows what would have happened to me. So she had given him his future. Can you imagine that, how rewarding that felt? Lastly, uh, last year we were back in Kenya and we went to visit um, Miriam and Joshua, who had now, they were gone not at this Jack Around a College cottage, you may know that they started an orphanage for specifically for HIV positive kids. What big hearts, my God, to do that in a, in a, a huge need. So we hadn't seen them in probably four or five years and we went to visit and had a delightful afternoon spending with them. And then we're getting ready to go and uh, as we're leaving, uh, Miriam says, you remember our son Mark? And Mark was a young man who really had a quite a few struggles as he was growing up. And he had a daughter, and um, if we knew that. We didn't really know what much had happened to Mark. And as we're leaving, uh, this little girl comes running up. And you know how shy Kenyans are, and so she's sitting there, you know, and she doesn't know what to do. And um, Miriam says, we named her Stephanie. Stephanie. For her. Thank you.